So welcome everyone. So welcome to the third session of uh, LeoCon webinar series. So today we have very interesting talks from the two uh, great speakers. So we will start with uh, Arshmed uh, uh, Akaven. So Arshmed is a network and system architect and research engineer and the leader of the advanced networking research team under the wireless system division at uh, Hawaii Canada Research Center. He received his degree in computer engineering from uh, Concordia University in Montreal and started his career at Bell Northern Research um, in Advanced uh, Intelligent Network and SSL, uh, SSL, SSL 7 uh, signaling. He has, um, he has since worked in a number of different companies, such as Cisco System, uh, Nor uh, Nortel, and uh, Siena, where he held uh, leading roles in numerous projects involving architecture, design, implementation, and various systems, control, data plane, engines, and protocols. Arshmed has over 30 years of um, extensive design experience and a uh, diverse set of networking technologies ranging from ATM, Ethernet, IP, to VBN and large-scale uh, traffic engineering to CDN, uh, segment routing, mobile network, uh, NVF. Arshmed has contributed to a number of publications and standards and submissions, and his prophetic patent contribute, uh, contributor and, in, and is currently focusing on various, various variety of research topics such as satellite networks, machine learning, cyber twin, metaverse, and blockchain, and exploring their use, uh, inc uh, inclusion, and impact in 6G and beyond at Hawaii, Canada. Arshmed, thanks for joining us, and the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much, Mohammed. I'd uh, like to thank uh, Leo Khan uh, uh, organizers, especially Mohammed and uh, Debokam, uh, for inviting me and uh, having me uh, uh, you know, invite me for this talk. So uh, let me share my screen with you and then just uh, go uh, right into the uh, uh, um... OK, can, can you guys see my screen now? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Oh, we don't see. Okay, there we go. Is it working now? Yes, yeah. I'm going full screen. screen. Yeah. Okay, so let's go full screen. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, as as uh, Mohammed mentioned, my name is Ashmed Akavain. Uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, the non-terrestrial networks and and uh, and uh, the way forward in 6G regarding these these networks. Uh, this is this is uh, not going to be a, a talk about solutions. I just want to actually use the opportunity for now, at least in this first presentation, uh, to talk mostly about the uh, the, the problems that, I, that we have seen around the, uh, the, the the this NTN network. The first slide sort of shows the uh, the landscape of of uh, this NTN network, uh, which is basically a, a multi-shell, uh, a multi-layer. Uh, network, which is fully integrated with terrestrial network, and it will provide um, a wide variety of different services to, uh, to, uh, to different type of applications from the urban areas to remote areas to ships, uh, cars and planes and etc. Uh, uh, one of the things that you will see here, I will talk about, you know, UE connectivity, like you know, user equipments and like smartphones and things like that. As you can see up here, like uh, the, uh, the by multi-shell, I mean that you know the the, the, the satellite networks or um, uh, that are uh, placed in different altitudes, uh, they can talk to each other. Let's say uh, the, the the geo is meos and leos. Then you come down to the multi-layer stuff, which actually is are interconnected with the with the multi-shell. Uh, satellite networks, which consists of drones and, uh, and different type of drones and HAPs, uh, the, the high altitude platforms. And down here, basically, we're talking about the, uh, uh, the antennas and the, uh, and, and the gateways uh, uh, that connect the, the, uh, the entire thing together to the terrestrial network. Uh, so let me actually get my, my pen here, my data point. There we go. Um, so uh, some backgrounds and motivations. I hope, ho I'm hoping that I can actually uh, just go through these things very fast. Uh, some the, the, the unfavorable geographical and economical obstacles basically has created these gaps in uh, in broadband and wireless services uh, and and, uh, and 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 coverage. Uh, there have been some significant uh, advances in satellite-related technologies. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the, 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 the reduced equipment and production costs, uh, the, the reusable launch vehicles, 
and the advances in in, in ion and uh, e propulsion system uh, for example has has, has extended the, uh, can extend the life of the the service life of the leos so all these contribution basically has has made the deployment of the mega constellation of satellites very economically feasible uh, the other aspect that has been uh, has helped the, the situation is the improvement in ground to satellite and satellite to satellite interfaces. Uh, there have been a significant progress in uh, free space uh, optical interfaces and acquisition targeting, uh, tracking and, and, and um, pointing systems uh, that has made these type of interfaces um, a, a possible uh, uh, way to, to interconnect the satellites to each other instead of using the traditional radios. Uh, the, other, the other aspect that it has become very interesting is this unique uh, position of LEO satellite constellations. And then you know, the, 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 in terms of uh, providing services, low latency services, especially when it comes to uh, long distances. And we'll look through this a bit more as we go forward. Uh, high altitude platforms are another aspect of the, 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 the non-terrestrial networks, and they can provide uh, wide coverage over urban areas. Uh, drones can, uh, for example, be employed to deliver connectivity for local rapid emergency services. Uh, satellite network is perhaps now, as a result of these things, are seen as a viable method uh, of addressing coverage limitations uh and allowing uh introduction of new broadband and access uh, broadband access and mobility services for example to to aircrafts and uh, to to ships in the ocean uh, over the poles for example to vehicles and iot devices uh provide global emergency responses so on and the the, the one thing that that is in the horizon is coming in is is this here, the direct mobile user connectivity is also on the horizon. You know, essentially, we are moving from the, the era of connecting to, to satellite with satellite phones uh, to, to using our mobile devices, actually, the smartphones to, to connect to these, uh, to these satellites and, and, and for connectivity for communication purposes. So overall, there is this renewal interest, a re a renewed interest in, in integrating satellite and HAPS and, you know, these type of things with terrestrial networks to realize a fully ubiquitous uh, network altogether. So uh, satellite networks have been around for a long time, uh, they, uh, as you know. So, but the, the, what has changed is the nature of the of the architecture, really. Uh, so we are moving to the era that is 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 we are moving to we are moving from the traditional satellite networks, which consisted of hundreds of satellites uh, and bent pipe uh, architecture and a small number of strategically located uh, glo uh, uh, ground uh, stations, uh, to 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 an architecture which uh, which consists of hundreds to thousands of satellites, depending of course on the altitude millions of ground terminals and stations and uh, support for mobile networks and tens of millions of UEs, um, user equipments. So uh, the, the, using this architecture, uh, we want to realize a low delay and global services of service availability that goes way beyond the traditional band pipe satellite networks. These type of networks will, of course, still contain single hop band pipe. Uh, they will also consist of advanced multi-hop via either ISL uh, inter-satellite links or reverse band pipes by the ground stations, as I show here in the on the, the ground station. Uh, going hop by hop means that uh, instead of having uh, going through the ISLs here, we basically go up and come down and zigzag through the ground station on, until we get the, to, the, to the proper way to to reach the, the data network. Uh, this network will be a complex multi-shell and actually can use uh, uh, space-related networks as well. So uh, some of the things that actually become very important in this, in this uh, uh, scheme is uh, the addressing and routing and forwarding methods become very crucial. Uh, and some of the existing methods deployed in terrestrial networks are sort of unlikely to actually be practical when we go to this type of mega constellation satellites and inter-satellite links. Another aspect that I, I sort of like uh, talked about uh, earlier was this uh, delay and latency advantage of, of the NTN. So if we just consider the, the first effect, uh, uh, order effects, like altitude, speed of light, distance, and constellation density, and ignore the second and third order uh, effects like uh, routing, forwarding, and queuing, for example, uh, we have seen that depending on the altitude and distance, LEO networks can provide a better delay performance than even fiber optic networks. 
uh, and in our calculation, actually, we didn't even consider the, the fact that, you know, optical uh, fiber is sort of, uh, is, is not on a straight line. We assume that, you know, we are having in a straight line and not a zigzag type of things to, to go around the obstacles. In, in reality, the fiber, fiber optic lines are much longer than the, uh, than the straight line between the two distances. And uh, this type of delay uh, advantage and this latency advantage has created a, uh, another excellent opportunity with respect to ubiquitous coverage for, for compute edge. Um, so here is some of the some of the examples when I talked about uh, uh, delay and latency. So uh, if you if if we do the calculations, we can actually come up with a function to express the delay in, in, uh, uh, with respect to, 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 the, to the altitude and, uh, and uh, uh, distance and the, the circumference and the, the Earth radius. So uh, if you plot this function, you will get this curve here. And uh, what you can see is that as long as the, the surface area, the surface uh, distance between two points uh, is greater than this, this, this function, the value of this function, which is basically this area, the satellite network, the NTN network, can actually do much better in terms of delay than the optical network. This is where the optical network actually does a better job. Now, if you look at like companies like SpaceX, for example, this is where how they put their satellites. Uh, it's about like 320 to 580 kilometers above the Earth. You can see that they can easily beat fiber optic delay uh, in, uh, in distances between, for example, New York to LA or New York to London, London to Shanghai or uh, like New York to Shanghai. The same is sort of true for, for um, uh, perhaps uh, looking at this, this graph here, you can see that this is, this is the, 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 the yellow line is basically the delay uh, with respect to the fiber optic lines. And the, the two lines here are the delay variations that you get from the HAPS, um, uh, uh, let's say a balloon or a, a high altitude platform uh, device. So uh, about 50 kilometers above the earth, uh, sorry, 50 kilometers distance between two points, uh, all of a sudden, the HAPS uh, delay performance uh, does a lot better job than, than, the, than the fiber optics. And of course, there is this region, uh, this altitude, that it's a no man's land, and we don't have, we cannot actually have uh, either HAPS or, uh, or, or, uh, uh, or satellites. Uh, this altitude basically is, is where uh, we don't have a choice. Um, but, uh, but using fiber optic lines, unless we actually increase the reach of the, of the signaling and antennas in, in our HAPs and, uh, and, uh, uh, and satellite uh, uh, MIMOs. So as I mentioned, there are certain assumptions that we made here. We, we basically uh, assume that there is no zigzagging of routes in satellite networks. Uh, no per hop delay. Uh, and we, of course, assume that there is a straight line uh, there is a straight line uh, fiber optic uh, between source and destination, which in fact is not true. And as I mentioned, in reality, this, this distance between two points on Earth using fiber optic lines is much longer. So here is the uh, look at the simulation. I'll come back to this. Like I, I want you to actually uh, you know, keep this, this two uh, videos in mind as we talk uh, through the rest of the uh, presentations. Uh, the, the left hand side is a basic polar constellation and the, 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 the right hand side what is what we call the Walker Delta. And as you can see, uh, um, as satellites move around, there is this plane in, um, in uh, polar uh, the constellation, which we call the seam, in which the satellites actually are going against each other. And uh, at the poles, basically, what happens is that the, 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 the satellites, uh, they, they disconnect their, uh, their links because all of a sudden there are a lot of satellites are uh, uh, jamming in the same uh, no, areas. So they, they shut down their, their, their links and they basically swap their peers as they pass through, uh, pass through the, the, the poles. The situation gets a bit more uh, drastic when we actually go to the, to the Walker Delta constellation. As you can see, um, the satellites sort of wrap around the Earth, and then they create this type of green versus yellow uh, uh, lines, uh, where in one uh, 
in one side the the uh, the satellites are going upward and the other one is the satellite going downward but now that the, this seam effect that we saw over here has been drastically exaggerated in in this type of thing especially if we go to if we want to connect the the, the red satellites to the, to the to the green satellites you will see the nightmare that we have in terms of you know link adjacencies and so on in when it comes to the routing system so keep these two, these two 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 um uh, videos in mind and uh, we'll talk about this a bit more as as uh, as we go through the through the the slides so, so there's a host of challenges ahead here so the, the, you know the, the biggest the biggest uh, problem is actually the motion over traffic sources so because the satellites are moving uh, uh, nodes experience much more traffic uh, variability compared to terrestrial uh, nodes the dynamic nature of satellite network is combined with the multi-hop packet forwarding requirement basically is 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 begging the need for an scalable addressing routing and forwarding mechanisms mobility uh, is uh, is another problem on uh, that essentially the earth is is rotating uh, node uh, movement basically has to be uh, taken into account and the network basically uh, has to support a scheduled and massive link fluctuation events and period adjacency changes, uh, which basically you, could, you, you saw in the previous slide in the video is that the seam and polar areas in particular in polar constellation and Walker Delta everywhere is if you're using Leos with the five plus links. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, what we call the scheduled events, of course, the network has to uh, safeguard itself against the uh, unscheduled events. Uh, fast moving terminals and UEs, for example, in aircrafts, uh, those are basically have to be taken into account as well. So scalability is another aspect that we have to uh, take into account. Uh, we are supposed to actually support, uh, support tens of millions of, of, of UEs, millions of broadband ground terminals and satellite ground stations and thousands of satellites. Into, and now we want to integrate this with terrestrial networks. However, unlike uh, uh, as we talk about standardization later on, uh, the, the, the enhanced uh, uh, mobile broadband is just one of the applications that will use this integrated network. There are a whole bunch of a slew of different applications that will use this uh, uh, network. So routing and networking, as I mentioned, uh, are one of the fundamental pieces of the puzzle. Uh, ad ad abstraction integration is a must. And uh, the other thing that we have to take into account is in a massive constellation, there's a many to many uh, connection model between satellite and ground stations and terminals and UEs. So one satellite can see a whole bunch of ground stations and, and UEs and uh, uh, a terminal down there can see uh, a few satellites at the same time. And at the end, we need to support communications for any combination of inter-satellite uh, ground station and ground terminals and UEs. So, what is the task? We need to devise mechanism to address all the above issues. So this is the, 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 the scope of the problem that we have to actually deal with. So um, now let's let's bring it back to the earth and see like how, how things actually work today. Um, so address aggregation, topology abstraction, and mobility, uh, how, how they work on earth. So if we take a look at the IP-based network, uh, we can see that you know, they, they, we know that they are hierarchical. Uh, IP doesn't lend itself well to non-hierarchical, non massive scale networks of thousands of routers and millions of addresses. It doesn't do that. Uh, in fact, it employs aggregation and topology abstraction to handle larger scale networks. What do we mean by this? Address aggregation, well, you have all uh, familiar with this. We achieve this through wild coding of IP addresses and best uh, prefix match lookups. Topology abstraction basically comes to the use of gateways. Uh, we employ gateways uh, and hide the topology behind them, and then route traffic to the gateways where more granular topologies are available for finer routing. Now, in a state-of-the-art IP inter, uh, interior gateway protocol uh, like OSPF or ISIS can handle hundreds of routers and hundreds of thousands of addresses. Uh, now, IP by itself doesn't uh, have native support for mobility. Uh, we have to basically devise additional protocols on top, like VXLAN, to support a relatively slow pace of mobility in IP networks. So the takeaway from this slide is that address aggregation and topology abstraction are key 
IP features for handling larger scale networks. Now, we have a dilemma now in massive low, net, uh, low networks. Uh, why? Because as we said, aggregation abstraction are crucial for scaling. Uh, traditional link state protocols, as I mentioned, uh, employ address abstraction and region definition to support hierarchy and as a result, network scalability. Uh, now, configuration and network engineering uh, to do this is essential. Essentially, what, what we're we doing in, in, in IP networks, we, if you take a protocol like OSPF, we define area IDs, interface addresses, uh, they're all contribute, uh, configured attributes. So, and then the network basically creates pure adjacency regions and topologies based on these configured attributes. Uh, and by doing this, they can reduce the size of the routing tables, uh, dark through execution time, uh, routing updates broadcast, and uh, decrease the, the, the number of routes uh, to, to propagate. Changing any of these configuration attributes result in outage and results in the flood to all the other nodes in the, in the area. The traditional IP mechanisms that we just talked about are not really guaranteeing to work to perform well in LEO networks. Why? Because of the movement. Uh, satellite move with respect to each other on Earth. Earth rotates under the constellation. Satellite moves and swap peers at the node, at the, at the poles. Uh, satellite change peer at the seam, especially when it comes to the Walker Delta, we saw the effect of when, uh, you know, this seam effect gets exaggerated everywhere. Uh, so the satellite's movement breaks configurable hierarchical membership mechanism uh, for, of, of traditional IP routing. Then the other thing is that the notion of proximity that wraps around the earth is absent in IP and cannot be handled by IP longest previous match. In short, IP is not designed to handle frequent link events and changes in the network at the same time. So uh, this picture basically just, just uh, summarize what I just talked about. So this is the seam. The satellite basically are going up this way and coming down the other side. And as you can see, this is a pole right now. And the satellites, when they move, uh, before, the, before reaching the pole, they were talking through, uh, uh, they were communicating through the yellow interfaces. And then they pass the pole. Now the interfaces are swapped or the, the, the peers are swapped. So the, the, the yellow interface is, is pointing to another, another peer. Um, and the red and green now have to connect these two satellites to each other. Configuration effects of OSPF, for example, like these satellites are, we, we, you know, the question is how are we going to actually configure area IDs or levels in ISIS, for example, to, to satellite networks, in satellite networks. So area zero, area one, area three. So the, 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 these satellites are moving around, so they're not going to stay within the same area. So that's, that's a big challenge. So nodes movement is, is the biggest obstacle in employing traditional configuration-based hierarchy. Satellite networks are flat as a result of this, which means that they, they, they have really no natural hierarchy and uh, they sort of wrap around the surface of a sphere. That's the reality of, of, of satellite networks. The other challenge is basically the end-to-end -end stable connectivity. Uh, as, 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 as shown in the next slide, we'll see that depending on the constellation density, ground-to-ground -ground connectivity and com uh, coverage might not be stable. And this becomes very interesting when we look at you know, protocols like TCP Quick and mobile, mobile uh, network protocols, uh, which is like N1 and N2 and N3 interfaces in, in, uh, in, in 3GPP, in 3GPP um, uh, architecture. Uh, in this is a simple case of using a, a remote ground uh, station to connect the user on one side to a 5G or 6G core uh, on the other side using the satellite networks. So, and uh, if I go to the next slide, uh, here's the problem basically. Uh, you can see that, you know, as we go through the satellite network, this is basically uh, what um, uh, New York to London, uh, you know, uh, routing. So this guy basically shows the, the gaps that we are created. This is a 1296 uh, node constellation at 550 kilometers. Uh, you see that there are gaps here that are created. And this picture basically shows the discontinuity of the connection uh, in, in, sat, in, in, this, in this constellation. And the final, um, uh, the, 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 the far right uh, diagram or graph shows the, uh, the variation in delay which can cause problem for TCP 
uh, Quick and uh, and mobile network protocols. Uh, traffic engineering QoS is another problem. Um, essentially, the nodes movement again is is our enemies. Uh, it makes in this, uh, the the resource allocation reservation extremely changing uh, challenging. OEM and operation model is is another big challenge. Uh, how to actually manage the end to end connectivity? We have to support multi operators at, at each side of the satellite networks. Uh, the ground stations might actually belong to different different uh, different operators. The satellite network can actually. Uh, belong to another another operator. So unlike terrestrial networks, uh, node move over different administrative regions, cities and, and, and countries. They may require accommodation by uh, various OEM and routing systems. End-to-end uh, -end network troubleshooting is, is an interesting area to actually take a look at. And above all, of course, security is another, uh, another important aspect. So if you look at the NTN in, uh, and, and mobile networks, uh, the NTN can be used as a back hole. NTN and, uh, can be used as a different flavor of front hole. It can be used as, as a Leo can be, or a HAPS can be used as an RH, uh, a ground station in the sky, or uh, it uh, can be used as a distributed unit or a DU component of the axis. HAPS, uh, they have their unique problem as well, because if they want to use it, if you want to use them as Gnode B or uh, radio uh, head, uh, they have to support much larger number of users. So that's another problematic area. And of course, power is another thing that we have to be worried about, especially when it comes to traffic, because uh, depending on the on the power level of the satellite, we might be able to, we might want to actually uh, not uh, route the traffic to a particular satellite, even though if it's available on top of us, we want to actually use one of the peers on, 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 on each side of it instead because uh, of the power levels. So uh, federated uh, and collaborative down uplink attachments to ground stations is going to be an interesting problem to, to look at. So where are we with standardization? Uh, some standardization is already on the way. Uh, the 3GPP is probably a bit ahead of everybody else. Uh, there have been recent uh, activities in OETF, especially with the creation of the TVR, uh, uh, time variant routing. Uh, however, this, uh, there's, there, are other, there are other activities in, in OITF that might be applicable, like, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, um, the other working groups that have already been established, uh, they can become very relevant now. Uh, some mobile operators and equipment manufacturers are, uh, are partnering with, with satellite operators and are starting to support basic services by uh, proprietary solutions, like, like local services, location services, emergency SOS, and short uh, predefined text messages. The bottom line is that uh, these efforts are seem to be very scattered now, and we need to basically uh, bring everybody together to, to look at the end-to-end -end problem. So uh, coordination and collaboration is very much desirable uh, in order to circumvent uh, fractured standardization efforts, avoid regional uh, or proprietary solutions, and support various services. Uh, and address different aspects of integration with terrestrial networks. So with that said, I conclude this particular session. As I said, I, I didn't want to talk about solutions. I just wanted to actually uh, talk about the problems they, problem of yours. And I would like to, uh, to invite you to get in touch with me if you're interested to, to work with us uh, in terms of a standardization and, and going forward with, uh, with all these efforts that are taking place in different arenas like OETF, 3GPP, and perhaps Etsy later on, uh, so we can, we can work together and, and, and provide some sort of a standardization, a standardization effort to, to avoid uh, the fractured uh, type of solution and proprietary solutions. Thank you very much for listening, and please do uh, ask me questions or, or get in touch with me if, if, uh, if, if, if you want to. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Arashmid. Great talk. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, before that, I would quickly like to thank Peter Ashwood Smith as well for the clarifications and the nice discussions. Um, so uh, the first question is from uh, Seen. Um, can you expand on your point about Leo's advantages with respect to Compute Edge? Uh, right. So uh, Compute Edge, as, 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 as you know, like every time it, it, we put a Compute Edge somewhere, we have, today what happens is that we have this concept of RAN. 
uh, that we, we, we take a fiber optic lines and connect them to the core of the mobile network, for example, or we connect them to, to, to other places. Like if you have a cloud, basically, that you're bringing to the edge, then there is physical lines that we, are, uh, we use to, to, to bring them to, uh, to, uh, to where the actual computation will happen or the more advanced computation, uh, like the, 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 the master machine learning uh, will, will take place. Now, if we go with, uh, with, with satellites, the fact that now we have ubiquitous coverage, it allows us to put this compute edge almost anywhere we want, right? Which is very close to places like uh, fish farms, for example, in, uh, in, in North Sea, uh, in, 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 in uh, South Pacific, and so on and so forth. So it, uh, using of satellite, it, uh, this, this ubiquitous connectivity provides us with this, this interesting uh, expansion of compute edge almost everywhere on Earth. Thanks. So uh, I'll take maybe one step forward and ask, like, do you think uh, in the future we'll see compute edge on the satellites themselves? It could. They are actually interesting that you said. Uh, yeah, there is talk about it. There, there are certain talks about it. It, it has its own challenges uh, because of the resource, uh, you know, scarcity in, in satellite networks. We have to be very careful in what type of things we put up there. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, it's the same idea that uh, the mobile uh, network providers like and 3GPP guys are thinking about putting a G node B up there in the satellite network or like, you know, uh, a DU module, basically, a, a DU module up there. So it's the same idea. But these are more challenging type of propositions than the simple, you know, uh, satellite uh, network as a transport to, to connect, to just simply connect things to, 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 to each other from both sides of the network. All right, thanks. So uh, the next question is from Vaiva Bhosale. Uh, he says the network delay model is quite fascinating and uh, he's curious to know about the connectivity pattern that you use. Probably he's talking about the topology, how the satellites are connected to each other. So we, in, in this particular simulation that we did, uh, we, have, uh, we have used Walker Delta Constellation and we connected them with, with four links. We purposely avoided the fifth link because, the, the, as I said, the routing and forwarding becomes completely unmanageable if we go uh, with the traditional routing uh, mechanism. Uh, so we we simply use the uh, our uh, our calculation and 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 uh, use uh, I believe thirty degrees uh, or thirty five degrees angle of antenna to to uh, to to simulate a coverage on Earth. The point is that. Um, Unless you have a very massive constellation, like you know, going beyond 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, you will have gaps. As you get to the to the poles, these gaps basically become irrelevant because you know the coverage is very good, very good. As you go toward the equator, that's where the problems are happening. Uh, so, um, and the, the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, right now. The the satellite the the, the 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 application guys like 3GPP they're pointing they, they're pushing this app this this they're under impression that you know quality of service and connectivity and 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 continuity will be handled by the satellite networks and satellite networks basically will all all uh, are, are under impression that okay well the application will take care of it right they, they basically have safeguards to actually you know make sure that this this gets uh, get 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 this gets resolved. So that's where some of this discontinuity is. So we are hoping that we can actually work together uh, or actually bring these two people together so that we can, we can address them uh, and, and put proper uh, solutions in place to manage this, this discontinuity. All right. So there was some discussion on hollow core fiber as well. Uh, so uh, right. if uh, you get some time, you can you know see what the comments have been and participate in the discussion. I'll quickly take one question from Nitinder Mohan. Uh, what are your thoughts on traffic peering between uh, different satellite operators in space? Is it an out there vision or a realistic scenario? Traffic. Sorry, I, I couldn't. I so, didn't catch uh, that. so it's like traffic peering between different satellite operators in space. So ah, space yeah. IXPs or Internet Exchange points. Uh, when we say traffic peering, it means basically that you know we are using ISL to 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 send traffic from one one satellite to the other, right? Is that what we are talking about? 
So from one constellation to the other, perhaps, yes. Oh, from one constellation. So the, the problem, so yeah, inter, inter constellation uh, uh, communication is actually another, another interesting topic. Uh, and it will have to solve the same problems that we have on Earth. Essentially, when we are uh, having two constellations going on top of each other, they're moving against each other. So it's the same same idea as the as uh, when this constellation actually moving against the Earth, uh, except that now two satellites moving in different direction have to talk to each other. The good news is that if you, for example, use two uh, two two constellations, uh, probably it's. Uh, easier up there to to uh, to 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 go upward and then come come back and it, it allows us to cover the much uh, to to skip a couple of the uh let's say leos to to go farther down the road uh to to another leo which is much closer to the ground station that we want to go to so it goes back to the to the, the first slide that i sort of like showed you guys uh when when i said that this is a, this is a multi-shell multi-layer basically network that uh, that needs to communicate with each other now for some traffic uh, which basically if you're just doing video uh, you know streaming for example right the the best thing to do is you drop the traffic the, uh, the, the, uh, to the first ground station that you can find that and then from from there you take fiber optic lines and go where the biggest bang for the buck is for the satellite networks are the delay sensitive uh, connectivity. That's where you want to actually keep the, uh, the packets inside the satellite network as much as you can to take advantage of that delay advantage. Awesome, cool. Uh, thanks for the great uh, Q&A as well and the talk. Thanks for your time, Arashmid. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Sure, thanks. absolutely. Thank you very much.